So now we have our finished board. This is enough to give you a pass and anything else you add onto there, um, that'll then sort of give you extra marks as we go across. So I'm just going to point out a couple of bits to you and you can then sort of model everything from there. So to begin with, we have um, for those of you who are only having to deal with the audio, we need to have a single switch. We've got two here. Um, that's because that's for the uh, MIDI on and off as well for those who've got a little more advanced side of things. But for those who are just purely dealing with audio, you only need one switch. Now this may well be a button that you're going to use or a switch, doesn't matter, the actual technique is all the same. So the way it works is that one of the pins, in this case with these on and off switches here, we're using a centre pin, one part of the pin is going to go off to the Arduino board for the actual sensor itself, and the other side you have a resistor that connects, which is going to ground there. The other side of the switch is simply going from your plus 5 volts. So all that happens is when the switch switches on, that then connects plus 5 volts to your output, which is going to be a digital pin, maybe pin 11, depends on what it is you want to do with your board. And then obviously to make sure we haven't got too much going through, we have a 10k resistor there, which is simply going to feed any excess current back through to ground. For those of you who are dealing with MIDI, all we do is we just simply assign in the code one of those switches to being note on and the other one to being MIDI mode on or off. Now for your notes, both notes and volume again are also handled in exactly the same way. So you can use a sensor, anything you want, but we're just using a couple of variable resistors here. We have one pin of the variable resistor connected up to your plus 5 volts. The other pin, as you can see, I've got a loop going through to here, so exactly the same for this one. That's going to be connected to your ground. All that means then is one variable resistor simply has a connector that will go to one of your analog inputs, and the other one will have another connector as well that will then go off to the other analog input. One of them will do volume, entirely up to you which one, and the other one will do your frequency. Now, if you're using a sensor, what you would have is that effectively the pins going between your plus 5 volts and your sensor input, that will be simply, I don't know, either a light dependent resistor or whatever you choose to use, and the other side, depending on the sensor, you'll have a resistance then that will then feed everything back down to ground. Nice and simple. Um, your audio output is really, really easy again. In this particular case, we're using an RCA connector. So we have one connector that goes to the centre, that will go to pin 9 on your Arduino boards, and then the other side is your ground feeding back through. And the final bit we have is your MIDI connector. This is simply for your power. You've got 220 ohms. You'll have obviously a connector then going to ground, same as with everything else, and then you have another connector that's going to go to the pin you're going to use for your MIDI out signal. Uh, for the code we're using, it should be pin 3. Just looking on the other side of the board, as you can see, there's not a great deal of soldering that needs to be done. A couple of places where you may find you need to simply cut through the tracks. Um, the only bit that's really important that you want to make sure you don't miss is for the MIDI connector, you can see there's two tracks there that are cut out. Right, so we have everything plugged in. So we have our four, 5 volts plugged in here. We have ground plugged in. We have A0 and A1, which are using for the volume and whatever frequency stroke notes that we're putting out, respectively. On the other side of the board, we have the yellow cable here, which is going for pin 9. That is actually what's giving you your audio out. Then I've got pins 7 and 8 for the two switches. Uh, for those of you who only have to do the audio, you only need to worry about one of those. And again, for, uh, for those who have got MIDI to worry about, then it's pin 3 that the MIDI is plugged into. 
Now to begin with we will look at the synth mode, so we have our audio plugged in so we can actually hear something. Now notice that there are two free leads that are here, these I've used for testing so they're not actually needed but it's very useful to be able to use these. I have one which is simply connected to the 5 volt line there and the other one is connected to the ground line and that means you can use your breadboard to simply plug those in there if you want any little extras. So if you want to experiment with your circuit. So for the moment I shall get these out of the way. As you can see we're starting off just with the normal introduction from the mozzie that uh, I gave you the link to beforehand. What I suggest is you make a few little changes. So for example here I've changed here so we're now calling this volume pin and frequency pin. Makes it a lot easier for you to work out what's going on. We have a note on pin. So we've got volume as pin 0, frequency as pin 1, and we have our note as pin 7. Scroll further down and we can see we have pin mode, so we're setting the note on pin as an input. Scroll a bit further through, you can see we're reading using an analog read. Notice as well it's the mozzie analog read, so that's for your volume pin and for your note on pin. And all we've got is a little if statement here, simply showing the fact that if your note is actually on, then we'll set to the volume to whatever's been read here. If the note's not on, then what it'll do is simply set the volume to zero. And we then end up printing out onto the screen, whatever that becomes. Next, we want to know what note we're playing. So we read in the frequency pin there, and we simply print that out. And scroll up a little bit more, and we simply set the note state there, so it's either on or off. Right, now we have update the audio, so all we do there is simply set it to whatever the volume is, that code's pretty much the same as it was before, and in the loop there we're just using the audio hook. Okay, so let's now actually show this working and give it a test. Obviously we have nothing coming out at the moment because the switch is switched off and if we move to the screen you can see it says note switch off. You can see frequency there. So if I move this, there you go, you can see the frequency is moving as I'm altering the part there. And so all I'm going to do there is then switch on the note. And you can hear something coming out. So there's the volume up and down, you can see the notes switch to on, and there's, so that's just showing it working and the note switches off, volume goes straight to zero and all is well. Now for those of you who are going to be doing the extra with a MIDI, just a couple of little extra bits you need then. So we now have exactly the same as before, but we've added in software serial as an extra include there. What that means is that we can set out a separate serial signal, uh, which is what MIDI uses, and we can set whatever frequency and whatever pin that we want. We have uh, volume and frequency pins set exactly the same way. We have note on pin, but we now have a MIDI note on pin as well, which we're currently set to 8. Um, other bits remain the same. Uh, we now have a software serial that we've set up that I've called MIDI serial, and that's going to be using pins 2 and 3. Because we're transmitting, though, we're only really interested in pin 3. Uh, we have a few constants that are added in, and again you can see with the uh, demo file I've given you with those, basically sending, setting up basic signals for MIDI on and off, those are the actual codes that MIDI understands. We don't need to worry about that, so we just simply set those up as constants to begin with. Uh, we've got a little delay, uh, it just simply gives everything a bit of a chart of time. You can play with that, see what kind of speed you can actually get. Uh, you may well find you can speed it up, you might find as you speed it up maybe errors start coming in. There's only one way to find out and that's to play and try it out. Uh, beats per minute for the moment we've got set as 128. You could change that if you wanted to. You could have a control change that, it's entirely up to you. 
Um, we've now got uh, Beats per minute there, basically that's just simply setting up some timing um, so you can actually create that. Uh, notice you've got 64, 30 seconds of notes, etc, etc. Uh, we're using MIDI channel 0, again you can change that. Don't forget if you're using drums, that will be MIDI channel 10. Uh, then we've got other little tiny bits that are all set up and that just helps everything get started. Now, you've finally done functions and routines. Well, these are a couple of function routines for you that are set up. We have one that basically sets up sending out a MIDI note. And notice what it basically does, it just writes out the serial port that we've created called MIDI serial. And for a MIDI note, it starts off with a command, pitch and velocity. And that's all that MIDI needs. Um, we've also got a couple of other routines set up as well. We've got data one and data two. Those are simply little bits that enable you to send signals like where you have uh, controls and faders and things like that. You can send data through using those as well. Uh, we now have a void setup. Set up just as normal. Uh, notice we've got note on pin. We've also got MIDI note on pin there for you. And we have our MIDI serial, yeah. and now that is the speed that MIDI sends. Okay, so it's 31,250 is the actual value. That's the number of bits per second that MIDI actually sends everything out. So as long as you don't play faster than that, you should be okay. Uh, we've got a little delay there, so we can obviously play with that. That's constantly set up beforehand. Now the first thing that happens when the MIDI is set up is it basically goes through all the channels and the notes and it just switches everything off. So that just uh, works a bit like a MIDI panic, you know, when you see the MIDI panic buttons on keyboards and synths and so on. So it just clears everything, all the data. Sets volume, patch and pans on, basically just resets everything there. So you've got everything basically in the central point. Um, those are just some little routines there that's going to be set up for you. Now, this is where we start doing some of the changes as well. So if we just come in a little bit closer for you. In the Mozzie update control routine here, in the same way as before we've got volume pin there, but what we've got as well as reading whether the note's on or off, we're also reading to see whether or not we're sending out a MIDI note. So basically, are we using synth mode or are we using MIDI node? We're checking the volume in this exact same way as before, printing all that out. Yeah, same as finding out the frequency there. And now, what we do is simply set in the same way as before. There, we were checking checking the note on state, but now we're also checking to see whether or not your MIDI notes on and off. Yeah, so what we're going to do is find out if we're in MIDI mode. If not, then it's going to run everything exactly the same way as it was beforehand. If we are in MIDI mode, all it does is simply add a little bit of extra code that it's going to run. So we want to find out what the MIDI note is, and we use that by mapping what the current position of that frequency pot is. And what that does is that all the values between 0 and 1023, which is the full range of inputs you can have, it'll then translate that and change that between 0 and 127 which is as many MIDI notes as you can have. And it does exactly the same with the volume position. So what it now does is it does a little check to see whether or not the MIDI note is the same as whatever the last MIDI note was. And if they are different then what it'll do is switch off the last MIDI note that you played ready for you to have the new one. If you didn't switch this off, there's a chance that what you might have is a whole load of MIDI notes simply playing lots and lots of different notes all at exactly the same time, which you probably don't want. You probably want it to go from one to another. So for the moment we've got it so the routine should pretty much control it so you only ever hear one note at a time. You can have a play, see if you can add more notes in if you want to. Um, we now have the actual MIDI note, so this simply sets up the routine sending it, so we've got MIDI note on, we've got uh, whatever the MIDI channel is, we've got the actual note itself that we're going to send through, and we've got whatever the position is that the volume is as well. Um, we then basically keep a note which is ready for the next routine when it goes round again to see what that MIDI note is. We store that, which is going to be effectively now your old MIDI note. 
and just print a few bits out then onto the screen so we can just simply check and make sure everything's looking good. All this stuff here as well, it's just all for printing out, this is all just for little checks. And just as before, we've got the routine there, simply send it, setting everything out, going through for the rest of the stuff for you modelling. So that is all it is, just that little bit of extra code in there, it's not a great deal, and you've got all that in Moodle that you can have a look at. So we're just simply adding a little bit of extra. Right, so the next thing we're going to do then is we shall compile and run that code onto the Arduino board, and as soon as the board boots up, what you should see is in here, which is just simply a little uh, MIDI monitoring tool I'm using, you should see that there's a little bit of data that suddenly shows up. And there we have it. So if we zoom in just so we can see, as you see, you've got here simply a time code and it's saying CC, so it's a control and channel, each of the different channels there. And it's simply setting all those values as zero. Control of 27 should be your volume. So that's just simply getting everything there ready. And what you should see then as well is if I bring up our monitor so you should be able to see that on screen as you can see now there's a little bit of extra data we have a MIDI note off as well so let's switch these switches on and it should sit on there MIDI note on and if I then switch on the note itself you'll see a little bit of extra data shows up on the screen Ta -da, there you go so what we can do is alter the volume in exactly the same way as before and you notice that we now have the MIDI notes as well showing there. It's a little bit messy because obviously going through you can see it's basically setting the note on and off very quickly and if we then have a look at the iPad screen you can see all these notes coming through and as I move through the frequency you can see the little red mark there moving upwards and downwards now the reason why you're getting it switching on and off on that is that little MIDI delay. So you may well want to change that, you may want to have it constantly on. Have a little play, see what uh, you decide to do there. Okay, so just to show you, using, uh, running, we just, I've just got one of the Korg uh, soft synths going there. And just to show the things actually working as well, so I shall switch the note on and... Oh, ambient sound! And you can hear the notes going up and down. So it's great for doing some little effects and so on. And you can use that for anything you like.